Hey, fifth graders. Welcome to episode four of our fraction operations review. Last time we did fractions times fractions. This one is fractions times whole numbers. Let's start off with a tune from our friends at Number Rock. Check it out. I was running eight miles away. I had already run three fourths of the way to find how far I'd travel from my front door. I did eight times three and got twenty four. Then I divided by four and I got six. Six miles I'd run in my brand new kicks. Multiplying whole numbers by fractions is awesome, yeah. But there's a similar problem we'll not have forgotten. Multiply by the top, divide by the bottom. Multiply by the top, divide by the bottom. I was riding to the video game shop. I had ridden five, six, twelve city blocks. How far I'd gone is what I wanted to find. Twelve times five is what I multiplied. I got sixteen and then divided by six. I had ridden ten blocks and did a cool bike trick. Multiplying whole numbers by fractions is awesome, yeah. But there's a similar problem we'll not have forgotten. Multiply by the top, divide by the bottom. Multiply by the top, divide by the bottom. The girl used repeated addition to see if she could use the strategy to solve a half times three. Shape up fast, and then it came like a flash. That a half plus a half plus a half is three halves. She converted three halves to one and a half. She had a crush that would last if one's a crush on man. Multiplying whole numbers by fractions is awesome, yeah. But there's a similar problem we'll not have forgotten. Multiply by the top, divide by the bottom, multiply by the top, divide by the bottom. Okay. Think you can do that? Well, we're going to get a math lesson um, from another math guru today. It's not going to be Rob. It's going to be Mr. J. Fractions times whole numbers. Check it out. Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to find a fraction of a whole number. And as you can see, there are four examples on your screen there that we're going to go through together in order to get this down. So for number one, we have two-fifths of ten. Now, whenever we're taking a fraction of a whole number, a fraction of a mixed number, or even a fraction of a fraction, we can turn this into a multiplication problem. So I'm going to come below here, two-fifths, and literally just change my of to a multiplication sign. Now I'm going to put my whole number over one. That way I have a top, a numerator, and a bottom, a denominator, and I'm able to multiply straight across. You can always put a whole number over one and it does not change the value of that problem or that number. So in order to multiply these fractions, I just go straight across. 2 times 10 is 20. 5 times 1 is 5. So I get 20 fifths. But I don't want to leave it as an improper fraction. So I need to do 20 divided by 5 and get this into a mixed number, or it might work out to be just a whole number. So 20 divided by 5, how many whole groups of 5 can I pull out of 20? Well, 4. And that hits 20 exactly, so I don't have anything left over. And the answer to this problem is 4. So 2 fifths of 10 
is 4. Let's go to number 2. 1 third, and then change the of, let's change it to a multiplication problem, 9. And remember, we can put our whole number over 1. That way, we have a numerator and a denominator. 1 times 9 is 9. 3 times 1 is 3. So I get 9 thirds. And here, I could do 9 divided by 3. How many whole groups of 3 can I pull out of 9? Well, 3. And that hits 9 exactly, so I don't have anything left over. And my answer is just a whole number. So 1 third of 9 is 3. So let's do number 3 here, where we have 3 eighths of 24. And I'm going to show you a different way to do number 3 now that we have the multiplication way down. So I'm going to actually do the multiplication first and then the other way. So 3 eighths times 24 over 1. Well, 3 times 24 is 72. 8 times 1 is 8. So now we get to this point where we have 72 over 8, and that's an improper fraction, so we need to do 72 divided by 8 and see how many whole 8s we can pull out of 72. And the answer to that is 9, and there's nothing left over. So our answer for 3 eighths of 24 is 9. Now, the other way we can do this is we can divide first. You can take 24 and divide by 8. So that would give us what 1 eighth of 24 is. So we can divide first and then multiply it by that top number. So again, we can do 24 divided by 8. That would give us what 1 eighth of 24 is. But we need three of those. So then you would multiply by three. So 24 divided by eight is three. Then multiply that by three to get three eighths. And three times three is nine. So we got the same thing. So you can divide first and then multiply by whatever the numerator is. So let's do number four. So we could do the multiplication way. And we get 2 sevenths times 14, 2 times 14 is 28, and 7 times 1 is 7. We have an improper fraction, so we need to do 28 divided by 7, which is 4. And 2 sevenths of 14 is 4. Or the division way, first, we could do 14 divided by 7, and that would give us what? 1 7th of 14 is, and that actually equals 2. 14 divided by 7 is 2, right? I take this 14, divide by that 7, and then multiply by how many 7ths I want. And I want 2 7ths, so I need to multiply 2 times 2, which is 4. I get the same answer either way. So there you have it. There's how you find a fraction of a number. We can create a multiplication problem and multiply, or we can divide first and find, for example, number four, we found out what one seventh of 14 was first, which is two, and then multiply by whatever the numerator is. So if one seventh of 14 is two, then we can multiply that by two to get what two sevenths is. So that would give us four. Okay, so again, there's how we find a fraction of a whole number. Hopefully that helped. Until next time, peace. All right, Mr. J, thank you very much for that. Fractions times whole numbers lessons. Fifth graders, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Multiplying whole numbers by fractions is awesome, yeah. But there's a similar problem. We'll not have fun, guys.